everybody, this is Onesie Punzi, or aka Vi. I just wanted to say hello to everyone first off, and um, to say that I'm excited to do this tutorial for you all. So, this was requested by Rohan's daughter, and a few other people have been asking me about masking and everything, so I wanted to show you how to mask when you don't have a masking program, like when you don't have um, Sony Vegas or Adobe After Effects. So, um, I use Movie Studio Platinum, um, let's see, I think that's the full, 13, um, because, um, yeah, it was cheaper than trying to buy Sony Vegas, in all honesty, and when I first got it, I thought it had the masking equipment with it, so I'm like, yay, I can mask, and then I put it in, and it's like, no, I can't, this is bad, so I looked up a ton of tutorials, and I finally figured out how to make masks when you don't have the equipment to make masks. So you will need a photo editing thing for this, um, software for this. So I'm going to be showing you how to mask Jane. Hooray. Um, let's see. So first off, what you want to do is you're going to bring in your clip. And I'd say normally if um, what you're going to do if you're going to be making something like this is first make a montage of what you want. So she's from this video that I'm working on for the Game of Thrones contest hosted by Fable Secret. Shout out for that. There's, I think she still has a few spots open. So if you want to join a contest, that is an awesome one to join. I also am hosting a contest, so if you want to join that one too, you're welcome. So, um, basically a montage is where you just put all your clips in the order you want them without any masks or anything, just so you know where everything is. So, I placed out where I want all the clips and then I would basically go in, bring over the little loop blue bar and then I will save the exact amount that I need for my frames and everything of Jane. So I know this is exactly where I want her, the exact length that I'll need it, including like when she'll fade off. So I'll probably fade off oh, around here for what I need and everything. So, but make sure you don't have it on fades already because it'll cut off your mask and you'll be able to see the other picture behind. So anyway, I went ahead and saved that clip. Um, for this, you don't even have to save the clip. I normally save the clips if I'm going to be opening up an AE or something. But for this, really all you have to do is copy it, pull up another um, movie studio or Vegas or whatever you're using, and then just um, paste it and your clip will appear. Ta-da! So anyway, I already have the clip. So then what you're going to do is you're going to push, or start it all the way at the beginning, and you're going to push this little floppy disk icon up here above your preview window, and it'll say save snapshot to file. And you're going to click it, and um, you can just create a, um, a folder for it. That's the easiest thing because you're going to be saving a ton of these. So, Jane Masks. Um, and it should just appear there. Let's see, save. Then, um, to get the next scene, you're going to have this little bar that says next frame. And you click it, and you save it, and it's there in your folder again. Um, you can also, if you don't want to click the next frame, which is what I generally like to do, just because it goes to the exact frame afterwards, and if you use the little bar, you can miss a frame. Which can make your... Um, video jumpy in the end. But what you can do is go s zoom in as close as you can on the timeline, take the little bar, and then just move it to where it would automatically move next. And then you can save that frame. So just continue saving your frames for the whole clip, or as many or as long as you need it to be. So just keep pressing this and save. That's why you need to kind of create a folder for it because if you put it in random places, it'd be hard to find. So um, I'm going to stop this and then I will connect everything once I have saved. Um, actually, I'm going to go and pull up a different project afterwards. Okay, so um, now I'm going to take you to Corel. So I use Corel Paint Shop Pro 11, I think. I'm terrible at reading Roman numerals, I admit it. So anyway, um, Pro 11. And you'll just bring up your thing. You can do this in Photoshop. Um, I know you can do it in GIMP, because that was the tutorial I found for um, what I was doing. 
so you can use GIMP. Um, you could probably use um, Krita. If you have that, GIMP and Krita are both free. Um, I know my, my best friend uses Krita for art a lot of times, and she says it's really good. Okay, so what you want to do is find your Jane files and just open them all up in whatever photo editing software you're using. Now it's important to remember the, um, the timeline, so that's why it's good to start out with image 1, image 2, image 3, image 4, image 5, image 6, etc. So what you're going to do is find image 1, then go to your little selection tool. Mine is called, um, normally it'll call, be called selection. It'll look like this and you'll see the little um, black and white lines to show, I guess, static. And then I normally go to freehand selection. And almost everyone has this. It's the little lasso tool. So, go down here and just start clicking away. And, um... It'll take a while because you'll want your edges as smooth as possible, but um, you can be as painstaking about this as much as you want, really. I'm going to be kind of quick here because I actually have already mastered, and I just want to show you how to do this in general. So basically, you're just going to go. You can be as nitpicky about it as you want. It probably is best to be nitpicky with this just because you're going to so much work. It's better just to be picky. But if you're not picky, then you can just go around the edges briefly. Try to get curves when you can. Um, my zoom button is broken on my computer at the moment, but you can also um, zoom in on this while you're doing this, I think. Some don't let you, and you'd have to start over with your mask. And I totally messed up that mask there. But like I said, I'm not going to be picky. I'm just going to do this thing. So, yeah, actually I'm just not, I'm probably not even going to finish this part because I just want to show you the basics. So, you'd finish that, select all around here, it would be so much better than this, like don't leave the blue or go into the coconut too far and chop off her hand or arm like I did. But anyway, you would go around that and you'd do each frame that way. So, after you have selected her, what I normally do is I copy the selection. I will um, then either open a new file or I will just um, create a new one. Paste as a new as a new image. Paste as a new image. Oh wait, no, that brings her up too much. Okay, never mind. I take it back. No. So what you can do, and I completely lost the selection. But what you can do is I actually saved a file um, a while back see if I can find it, where it is the same dimensions as this. And what I did was I just created an extra picture, image one copy, and I went and created the green screen that I needed in the color palette. So you can do a green screen, a blue screen. Um, most time a green screen will be the best to use unless your character has a lot of, is wearing a lot of green. Then do a light blue green or a teal, not teal, um, it's really bright blue color. I, that's not teal, but I don't remember the name of it. So anyway, um, just you could fill it in with your paint bucket. What I normally do is I just get a big paint brush and brush it all out. Which you can't see because I got it so big. But anyway. Ta-da! So that's what you do, you just brush it all out. Okay, so I'm going to stop this and then I'll come back to you guys in a minute.